So we're on the Jesus Trail. Look at this. Wow. Now we'll warn you that there is a lot of trash and junk that people spoiled this with, but look at all the poppies too. Beautiful. Red and I came from that direction. There's Naz Nazareth over there. You can't really see it. And I'm going to be heading up this way.
Check out these silkworms. They're, they're really soft. I'd like to get a big handful of these and feel what it feel what it's like. Right now I'm nearing the hordes of Hatin, which is probably the most likely place that Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount. This is an interesting place because it's the site where three things are supposed to have happened. First, the Jews point to it as the place where Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, is buried, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But then the Crusaders in 1187 were routed by Saladin. Here, uh, they basically got themselves into a really awkward position in the dry season where they were stuck up here surrounded by Saladin's army and uh, dying of thirst and unable to get down to the Sea of Galilee which is right over the crest of that hill to get water and um, they fought dehydrated and died so that was a key battle in the history of the Crusades. Then, some scholars believe this to be the most accurate place, um, according to Luke, where the Sermon on the Mount would have been preached. And so, uh, not exactly on top of the mountain, apparently, but because Luke says there was a, a level place or a plain uh, near it, uh, and this also is quite high above the surrounding areas, uh, it would have served that purpose. I don't think they think it was on this side, but I could be wrong. I think the southern side, which they say would be on, on the opposite side of this, so... Uh, that's that's an exciting possibility. So now we're up on the horns of Hatin mountain or hill and uh, you can see in the distance sort of give you an idea of the scale. There's, there's a person in purple way over there among the cacti and see all the flowers? There's actually um, some purple flowers over here. I don't know if you can make them out, but really pretty. And so you can see that this sort of lends itself to a natural amphitheater in a way um, because it's on a mountain, but it's also a level plain like an auditorium where you could easily accommodate thousands of people. Um, I know this is hard to, under, to, to understand the scale, but up there, a man would, would be like smaller than my, than half of my fingernail up, up on the top. I mean, it's really expansive. And so that is, that is an option. Although some scholars think that it would have been on, uh, the side of this mountain, but in any case, this is pretty cool to imagine. And I mentioned the flowers because in the Sermon on the Mount is where he mentions the lilies of the field. I have to do some investigation on that word. Why they, we say lilies, because these obviously aren't lilies, but um, there may be a, a reason. And these are these are what they look like, these little guys. So check out this vantage point. It's really incredible. This is from the highest spot on the horns of Hatin, and 
You can really just imagine if this was the spot where Jesus preached or taught, he could be up here and all the people down there. Um, I don't even know if that works acoustically or if he would have to be down there and then the people like sitting as in a as in an amphitheater like right along this this slope here that I'm above well, it could have been like that too I guess but it's an incredible view right here you can see the Sea of Galilee peeking out there and then all over here it's a little hazy today I'm not sure what city I think that's our our bell where I'm headed and um, for scale there's some cows some people down there my backpack and we zoom out it's pretty awesome So here we are, descending the cliffside of Mar Mount Arbel. Um, in 789 BC, this was united to that, and there was an earthquake and split these apart, made a huge valley in between. It's a beautiful view, but it's really hazy today. And um, you can hardly see the Sea of Galilee, which is right here. It's just a big haze. So there's the path that I'm following. And basically, I'm going to walk down that way and then all the way to that town right there. Which is called Ginosar. And I'll take a boat from there to Tiberius. Flag. We're gonna declare this boat as a Canadian territory on the Sea of Galilee. Have it! Amen. You have a permit to work in Canada? I hope because you if not, you will have to jump overboard now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. People, all rise and face your flag. <laughs> Be patient. Here we are in Caesarea. This is an interesting amphitheater because it's where Herod stood up in his silvery clothes and um, you can see the ocean is right here west side Mediterranean and Josephus' account um, he stood up here in the morning light so the rays of the sun are coming from the east lit him up resplendently in this silver robe or whatever that he had on and this is when the people said the voice of a god and not a man and when he was struck down by god and eaten by worms which is a way of saying that 
he uh, wasted away. Um, and that's when he had a, he, he was struck by a sickness, a wasting disease that um, he died from, um, I think it was a few days later or so. So this is pretty neat to be able to visualize almost exactly where he would have stood right there. And uh, this is all reconstructed, uh, the stadium some of the original floor in the on the stage is is still there uh, you have these marble columns uh, well the bases of the columns here and here which are special because there is no marble in Israel it all had to be imported from other countries like Italy or Greece and so this just shows the opulence and extreme riches of this area, especially Herod.